Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Click for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5, approaching the planet Venus. We're on vector for the Venus City atmosphere shell, sir. Fine, Hap. Cut our velocity. Yes, sir. Hey, that's strange. The controls won't respond. There's a warning from Space Control. Decelerate quick. I can't, sir. Nothing happens. Well, try changing vector. The controls are frozen. Someone sabotaged the ship. What? Smoking rockets, if we don't do something quick, the ship will crash right into the heart of Venus City. We'll return in just a moment with the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Shadow of Shardu. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Ah, uh, Nestle's new coconut bar. That's for me. You have to eat one to believe that there could be such a wonderful flavor combination. Just imagine. Thick, rich, smooth milk chocolate crammed to the edges with fresh toasted coconut. And it's such fun to eat, too, because it gets crisper with every bite. Care to add anything to that, Hap? Hap, you're dead happy, will you please answer? Oh, golly, Commander, I'm sorry. You know what happens to me when you start talking about Nestle's new coconut bar? I just close my eyes and leave this planet. Yes, sir, I, I imagine I'm eating one right then and there. Mmm, I can just taste that sensational, creamy, rich chocolate and all that super coconut. Oh, it's so crisp, so delicious, so... There I go again. <laughs> That's the way it is, Commander, and there's only one cure for it. Oh, what might that be? Why, I've got to eat a Nestle's coconut bar, of course. Well, now, that seems like a good idea for you, for me, for all space patrollers, too. The gang, why don't you find out for yourself? Treat yourself to a brand new, brand new coconut bar. You'll really go for it. Everybody goes for Nestle's, Commander. Wonderful milk chocolate, almond chocolate, and crunchy crunch bars. And naturally, the new coconut bar in the red and cream-colored wrapper. Smoking rockets, Nestle's certainly makes the very best chocolate. And now, our space patrol adventure, The Shadow of Shardu. Commander Corey has discovered that agents from the planet Dargida near the star Antares are secretly at work in the solar system searching for a jeweled crown. Of the two known agents from Dargida, one has been captured. The other, Orkan, escaped from Earth. Buzz fears Orkan will try to locate the one man in the United Planets who may know the whereabouts of the crown, the archaeologist Howard Sterndorf. So far, the commander has been unable to contact the scientist to warn him of the danger he faces at the hands of the ruthless intruders from Dargida. Right now, Buzz and Happy are in the commander's office at Terra headquarters. Well, there's one thing in our favor. If we can't find Sterndorf, then neither can Orkan. You forget, Happy, we don't know how big an organization Dargida may have in our solar system. There would be Emperor Shardu may have agents everywhere. We sure didn't find out much from the one we captured, this uh, Torzak, not even with a brain attack. These men from Dargida have tremendous control over the minds. This mental power, or sight forces, they call it, enables them to perform incredible feats of strength. Yeah, they sure found that out the hard way. What I can't understand, sir, is why a super smart race of people would, would put so much value in a crown. Why couldn't Shardu be emperor without it? I don't know enough about Dargida to answer that. Huh? I don't see how we're going to protect Sterndorf, even if we do find him before Orkan does. Uh, unless we keep Sterndorf a prisoner for his own protection. Mm, there's just one way to protect Sterndorf from the agents of Dargida. That's to make him useless to Shardu and his spies. Well, how can we do that? If Sterndorf knows where the crown is, he oh, can... excuse me. Commander <laughs> Corey here. Yes, Captain. Fine. Lowell City? Good. He doesn't know why I want to see him. Well, don't tell him. Just keep him there. It won't be long. I'll blast off immediately. Hurry out. Hap, Howard Sterndorf is on Mars. Captain Walden in our Lowell City headquarters got a bright hunt and checked with the curator of the Lowell City Museum. That's a break. Now we can get to him before Orkon does. Let's get to the spaceport. Meantime, in the spaceship traveling between Earth and the planet Venus... Orkan, agent from the planet Dargida, contacts his leader, Shardu, near the star Antares, 170 light years from the solar system. I should reach Venus in about two hours, Shardu. And that is where the crown is? I cannot be sure. 
I do know that the scientist who found the crown in the Zanapi ruins lives in Venus City. It shouldn't be difficult to locate him. Once I find Howard Sterndorf, I will force him to tell me where to find the crown of Darjeeda. I am somewhat concerned, Orkhan. Have you contacted Agent Tordak recently? No, Shardu. I saw no necessity for it. I have tried repeatedly to reach him. He does not answer. His last report is long overdue. When did you last hear from Torzak? Shortly after you left the desert region. He told me he had this Commander Corey and the Cadet Happy under control. That is true, Shardu. When I left, Corey and the Cadet were still dazed from the weakening effect of my psych force. Suppose they succeeded in overpowering Torzak. That's impossible. Then why hasn't Torzak reported? Until I learn differently, I must operate on the theory that they did escape. We must change our plans immediately. But Shardu... We must run no unnecessary risk. Before he has escaped from Torzak, then he will attempt to warn the scientist who's turned off. He will also alert the Venus authorities to watch for you. Should I return to Torzak's place in the Earth's desert? No. Contact Rotor, one of our agents on Terra. He can determine whether Corey is back in action. And if he is? Corey is the greatest obstacle to the recovery of the crown of Daijida. He must be destroyed. In a hotel room in Lowell City on the planet Mars, Buzz and Happy confer with the elusive scientist Howard Sterndorf. Let me ask you a question. Didn't you explore the Zanapi ruins, Anna? Yes, last year. But it wasn't a very complete exploration. I was called back to Venus to take over some classes at the university. Did you find a jeweled crown in the room? Why, yes, I did. Very strange, too. It just didn't belong among those Indian artifacts. You're right, it didn't. We know where that crown came from. You, you do? Where? From a planet near the star in Paris. It was stolen a thousand years ago, brought to Earth and hidden in his room. Well, that's why you're in danger. Oh, just a minute. If this is one of those tires from legends about an ancient curse, you can forget it. This is serious, Professor. Where is that crown? Well, uh, back at the Venus City University. Locked in a vault, I suppose. <laughs> my goodness, no. It's on the shelf in my office. In plain sight? Of course. The restoration of an empire hinges on that crown. Agents from Darjeeda are in the solar system right now, and they'll do anything to get it back. Well, why not give it to them? If it's there, we can't be sure it's all they want. They'll never know who their agents are unless they reveal themselves by making attempts to get that crown. All right. Interstellar politics is out of my line. I'll give you the crown and you can lock it out. Mm, that won't work with these spies. No, Professor. No secret is safe from them. They've got something they call a psych force. They can produce a mental energy that can overpower our own self-control. I know. One of them made me tell them your name. And they can concentrate that power in physical energy. When they want to, they're as strong as ten men. Now, here's our problem. Neither you nor I must know where the crown is. Yet we must be able to produce it on short notice in case we have to. Yeah, well, that's quite a dilemma. How would it work if I gave it to a friend and asked him to hide it? Oh, the Gita agent could easily make you tell the name of it. Then. Well, then your friend would be on the spot. What we need is a way of not letting our left hand know what our right hand is doing. Exactly. Now, here's my suggestion. Each of us will make a list of 20 men we can trust. That's 40. Then envelopes will be prepared and addressed to each of these 40 men. There will be no return address on any envelope. Thirty-nine of them will contain blank pieces of paper, or perhaps a circuit or anything. It doesn't matter. And the fortieth envelope? That will contain a letter over my signature, asking that person to go immediately to your office, get the crown, and hide it without telling anyone. The person receiving the instructions will be asked to send a letter to the secret documents section at Space Patrol headquarters in town. I see. Now, on the outside of the envelope will be a file number. Inside will be the man's name, nothing else. That envelope will be filed without being opened. Then can I go to Venus? Not until I get word from the secret document section that a letter with a certain file number has arrived from Venus City. That'll be proof that our plan worked and the crown is safely hidden. Nearly two days later, in a hotel on Terra, Professor Sterndorf impatiently awaits word from Commander Corey that he can return to his work at the Venus City University. As the hours drag on, he nervously paces the floor, muttering to himself. Uh, Commander Corey overestimates these Gurjida people. Wasting all this time, and I could be... Uh, that's the commander. In high time, too. Well, I was wondering... Uh, oh, hello. Professor Sterndorf? Yes. What can I do for you? I'd like to come in, if you don't mind. 
Well, I, I'm rather busy. Thank you, Professor. Now, just a minute, young man. It shouldn't take very long. You're certainly a hard man to find. I heard you were in Lowell City, but by the time I got there, you left for Terra. However, it... what's the matter, Professor? I don't know. Something me, I felt a trifle dizzy. Think nothing of it. I usually have that effect on people. Who are you? What do you want? It doesn't matter who I am. You took a jeweled crown from the Zanapi ruins on the planet Earth. Where is it? You. You're a Darjeeta agent. Where is the crown? I don't know. Don't lie to me. Eventually, you're going to have to tell the truth. You'll save yourself much mental torture if you stop fighting your impulse to answer. Where is it? I am telling you the truth. I don't know where the crown is. Does Corey have it? No. Who did you give it to? I don't know. Then you did give it to someone, didn't you? I don't know. You must be telling the truth, but your answers don't make any sense. Corey sent someone to get it. Yeah. Now we're getting someone. Who did he send? I don't know. Are you expecting someone? Yes. Commander Corey. That's probably who that is. What's he coming here for? Well, most likely to take me to Venus. To get the crown? No. Neither of us knows where the crown is. I'm stepping into the next room. Answer the door, but get rid of Corey. Tell him you don't need an escort to Venus. Do as I say. Wait till I get out of sight. Good afternoon, Professor. Hi, Professor Sterndorf. Good afternoon. Everything has worked out fine, Professor. We'll take you to Venus as soon as you're ready. I, uh, I'm not ready to return yet. I have found a few matters of interest here on Terra. When I attend to them, I can return to Venus by myself. I do not need an official escort. Good day, gentlemen. But professor. Happy that Professor knows his own name. Very well, Professor. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Strange to you? Yes, he seemed to be acting in the picture. There's someone in there with him. I'm going to take him by surprise. Uh-oh. Uh, Vegeta agent. Stop him. I'll take him off guard before they have a chance to generate super strength with the psych force. Are you going back? Yes, sir. Hello, Vegeta agent. Professor, where is he? Right here, Corey. Come on, come on. It's our oh. You shouldn't have done that. It's their fault I had to knock them out. They stormed in here ready for trouble. It would have been difficult to overpower them with mind energy. All right, Professor. Bring me a sheep in the bed. What? What are you going to do? Tie them up. I'll have Voder come here and revive them. You're coming with me to Venus. Uh, but the commander and Cadet Happy. I... Who is Voder? Another Darjeeta agent. And if they don't tell us where the crown is, Voder will show them that the psych force can be more tortured than a severe beating. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, how's your morning tempo? Do you go around like this? Or are you the kind who speeds through school and chores like this? Well, I bet you the difference is breakfast. Yes, sirree, a good big breakfast topped off by a good big cup of Nestle's Everetti Cocoa can make all the difference in the universe. Breakfast eaters are never slow starters nor mid-morning slumpers either because they get the pep and go they need to last clear through. And let me tell you, when you have Nestle's Cocoa with your breakfast, you're treating yourself fine. The flavor's so rich and chocolatey and delicious, just like those sensational Nestle's chocolate bars. Another thing, Nestle's is the only instant cocoa that contains rich whole milk and sugar. That's where the pep comes from. And, of course, Nestle's is so easy to fix, you can do it yourself in no time. Just put one, two, three spoonfuls in your cup and add hot water. Easy? Why, you never saw anything simpler. Good? Well, you just take a big swallow, and you'll say it's the greatest. And, boy, wait and see how you speed through the morning just like this. (laughs) 
Remember, ask Mom for Nestle's Ever Ready in the bright red box. It's chocolate rich and wonderful. It's Nestle's. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Shadow of Shardu. Commander Corey knows that agents from Darjeeda with their specially trained brains can generate a psych force strong enough to make any ordinary person reveal any fact that he knows. Was therefore worked out a plan so the crown of Darjeeda can be hidden by an unknown third party. Thus, neither Buzz nor Professor Sterndorf have any direct knowledge of where the crown is or who has it. But Agent Orkan captured the professor and knocked Buzz and Happy unconscious. The two space patrolmen come to their senses in the professor's hotel room on Terra to find themselves securely bound by strips of sheet torn from the bed. I think I'm getting it, Happy. The strands of sheet around my wrists are beginning to give. I'm not making any headway with mine. Orkan used too much of his super strength in tying me. He pulled a knot so hard he weakened the fabric. Yeah. Oh. Listen, we'll be on our way. I was beginning to think nobody was ever going to come. Uh, get me loose, will you? Take it easy. Where's the commander? All kinds said he had both of you tied together. Right here. Oh, that was a beauty, commander. Uh, I had to get him quick before he got his sight force into gear. You sure did. But he's completely out. He can't tell us where Orkon is. That's why we you. We'll get him to headquarters. If we can get him under a brainograph before he completely recovers, we might find out plenty. Far from the regular space lanes, a private cruiser follows a vector toward the planet Venus. Orkan checks the viewscopes carefully, then makes spacephone contact with Shardu on the remote planet Darjeeda. I have captured Professor Sterndorf Shardu. He is locked in a compartment of the ship. What about Corey? By now, Voder probably has Corey and the cadet well under control. Why didn't you take Corey with you when you had the chance? I was compelled to use physical force, Shardu. It would have taken too much time to wait for them to regain... 